Okay, this is Ming here, and I'm going to go through the process of taking your own images and showing you how you can bring them into Stable Diffusion, train them in Dream Booth, and then in Automatic 1111 produce images similar to these. Uh, first thing you need is a Hugging Face account. It's free. Go there, sign up, get yourself a token. The link is going to be in the description below the video. Have a Google Drive, a Google Drive account, which is get a Google email account, you'll get a Google Drive account for free. If you have questions about that, there are plenty of things online to help you with that. It'll allow you to double click on the Colab and it'll open it up into Google Colab, which allows you to use their computer systems and some of their hard drive space for free. I have 169 images that I created from photos that I've had, a lot of different poses, made them all square, and brought them down to 512 by 512 pixels. That's generally what's trained on these systems. There is another link, Burmi. That site allows you to drag and drop images, download them to your hard drive, and use them in the Colab. So now we're going to the Colab. When you first click on the Colab link, it will take you to Colab Research, dot google and you will see a thing in there that says copy to drive you copy to drive and when you do that it'll open up another window and that way it is now saved onto your hard drive or your google drive the google drive itself right here i put mine all in a folder called collab notebooks and that's where you will find them that means later on you can just double click on the collab that you like and it will open up this window where you can start using it. This link at the top is where you can get the latest version of it for free. This is all open source. First thing I'm going to do is click on the top button, basically for permission to use my Google Drive account to store files and to store this training session. I give it access. I allow it. I say OK. I've already got my green check mark from my Google Drive account. So when I click that up, my Google Drive, G Drive up here. I can scroll down. That's my drive right there. Next thing I'm going to do is go to Dependencies, Xformers. I'm going to use the token that I got from Hugging Face to download the current model. Current model is uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5. When you access this, you have to accept the terms. And again, it's free as well. Now it's running the Hugging face model, and it's bringing it down. And you can just scroll up to this point. A lot of this is sitting and waiting. It is done. It's got that. This is the new fast method. I did not use that. I have access to the faster computers, so I have not uh, played with that just yet. So this section I won't use. I go to the setting up. I am training for a character a human individual. I'm going to set it to character. I'm going to leave this priority preservations on. I will not check captioned image instance images because the images that I have are not captioned specifically uh, describing what's in the image. I'm going to let the uh, system itself determine what it is. I'm using the subject type man. You could use person, you could use woman, you could use, you know, whatever you're training this on. The instance name is what you're going to use. So when you type out something and you want an image, say I want myself with, you know, punk hairstyle, I would type in ZXC because that's what I'm using right here, space, then the word man, and then punk hairstyle or whatever I want to put myself into or try. So these are the two things that you'll be using as your prompts. Here is the instance directory. This is optional. This is what I have used. This is the Ming Data XC. As we go through here, I have put it in my SD folder, which is Stable Diffusion. The Ming Data XZXC, which basically has 169 images, and I have them labeled with the actual instance name first, then a space, and then the numbers. All I do here is I went to those three buttons and put copy path and essentially just went through here and pasted that path in there. Now I have 192 images, so I do have to change that. I did add a few. 
I am still here. That's that little thing to make sure that I'm not a bot. So it's 169, not 192. I was ahead of myself, so 169 images. And I won't save the class images to the G drive because they are coming from the G drive. So I'm going to run that. Basically, that kind of just tells it where things are. Optional is to upload or choose a, a folder of class pictures. Now, because I'm using man as my class, I went to another data set at Kaggle, K-A-G-G-L-E dot com, put the links there and below, where you can get data sets from just about everywhere on just about anything for free. That's where I downloaded, I think it was 200 and some images uh, of different men and I'm using that as my class here. If you don't do this, uh, Stable Diffusion draws from its own um, Stable Diffusion data sets and puts in what it feels are men or whatever you determine that class to be. I find that when I do it myself, I get better results. So I'm going to make sure that it knows where that folder is. And then I'm going to start Dream Booth. Now, uh, FP16 or half precision means it's slightly lower quality, but double the speed. Um, disable that if you intend to retrain the model. I'm going to go ahead this time and run that. And we've got training steps of 1500. I'm going to go up to 17. Yeah, let's go 1800 today. You don't have to, like the fast version says you can do it in 600 steps. And I'll try that later, but right now I'm using this one. 1800. I will save a checkpoint uh, every 500 steps or so, just in case I get booted off or in case uh, you know, some other situation happens to where it doesn't run anymore and I get um, it doesn't process this anymore. So I wanted to save at least in steps of 500. So later on, I can just use that uh, trained model of up to 500 and give that a whirl in the actual processing of. Uh, prompt images. So now we're going to do the, the actual running of this. So it is training at this point, and I will occasionally watch this. I'm at 1% now, and we're going to let this run, and I'll come back to it. But I will stay and monitor this occasionally, so just in case it checks to make sure that I'm still attentive to it. Even on paid accounts, it does that. Not as frequently. Okay, so it is just finished. This is the model because I put it in the models folder. Otherwise, it's in my drive. I'm going to get the uh, path here. The model is CXC is the instance name. And I am going to use a custom path. When I click on this, it will ask what the path is because I clicked on that. And I will type that in and then hit return. And then it starts setting up the automatic 1111. I also have update repo on here. So the update repo, which it is using, is automatic 1111. When you do update repo, it makes sure that you have the latest version. So basically all these, all this red, don't be alarmed by the red. It just lets you know that those changes were noticed and recognized here and what they were. So that's a good thing. There we go. It was actually fast. So now I click on this, or what I do is I open it in a new window. Click continue on the next page. What I'm going to do is occasionally make sure that this is in the background that I can see that, or go back to check it every once in a while, uh, so that it's not checking to make sure that I'm not a bot and things like that. Because if for some reason this hangs, it might be because the system either kicked me off or is asking whether I'm a bot or not. And I can check up here in this corner. This is where you can check your models. So if you have a model a folder of models uh, in the normal automatic 1111 collab, you'll be able to actually go and assign the model folder. Uh, you'll see a whole listing of the models that you have there. So this one we're going to do man, whoops, XC man. Portrait, go bond, shoulder, length, hair. And then we're not going to do anything else. We're just going to let it run there. We will check restore faces and just give it a try and see what comes up. Oh, there we go. That's actually, that's, that's a fantastic image. Uh, I guess it is a little blonde, but wow. 
That's really impressive. Oh, it gives me a blue background. Okay, so you have to play with this. You have to figure out uh, what is and what is not going to give you the response that you want. So I'm going to do GQ Magazine Cover Armani Suit. We will do Studio Lighting. Oh, yeah. Not bad. I'm going to crank this up to 768 so we get that. And we're going to bump this sampling steps up higher. So sampling steps take longer to render, and but it does give more detail and so forth. There we go. Okay, so in the negative prompt here, I'm going to do black and white, or BW. So these are things that you don't want. So if I want to do the same exact image, just not black and white, I make sure that it pays attention here. These are things I don't want in it. <laughs> well, I certainly didn't get black and white. Okay, there I am. It is. It has certainly gotten more detail. It's it's pretty cool. Let's take a look at Euler or e Euler. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, let's crank that up high and see why it's giving me a um, Campbell's soup from uh, that one artist type illustration. Oh, well, they... <laughs> well, if I wasn't flaring it with the red, <laughs> uh, the purple certainly does, uh, does a job. Uh, sometimes you'll get some stuff that that is, it's perfect for a, a gag reel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this. Uh, when you drop the GFC scale or CFG scale down, I actually have dyslexia, so in speech and, and uh, typing, so it takes a little bit. Pardon me for that. Uh, the CFG scale, uh, when you lower that, uh, allows for more randomness on the computer's end. So we can do that, but I'm also going to drop the sampling steps because I don't know what's coming out and I don't need it to be uh, a high cost uh, sampling. Interesting. Not bad. Gives me an extra leg. Sometimes you have to encounter that. Uh, flare red. Now remember, a lot of this is occurring because I put in uh, black and white. I don't wish to have black and white and so forth. I could put in other things because this is the NSFW, so nude, whatever else, that will actually work, so you have to be careful. And sometimes, uh, I mean, if you're not going for that, and um, like I, I so we do some images, I won't show the full thing, but uh, they produce some really cool stuff. Um, and this dice here goes back to randomness, and so now we're just going to let it fly and take a look at what it's going to produce. And this sometimes is where you'll get those random things. Oh, I'm doing some uh, form of stretching with my other leg back there. If you press it again, it runs uh, another complete uh, cycle here. And let's do muscle and fitness. <laughs> uh, you can get, you're going to have a lot of fun with this. So, um, what I also sometimes, let's see here, uh, sci-fi, let's do this one. Hmm. Keeping it interesting, um, a little bit of uh, illustration. Okay, so what I'm going to do is change things here. I'm going to go by, James Gurney is always good, uh, Norman Rockwell. And then James Gurney. They're actually pretty good together. We'll drop this down a little bit so I have a faster sample. Not bad. It's getting uh, a tad more realistic. <laughs> okay, I'll run that again. I'm going to add a secret 
uh, artist in here. I won't type it in, but I will put it in the next video. Um, there you go. That particular artist uh, brings out a certain realism. Invest time in looking up these other artists and um, really understand uh, how they came about and the works that they have. I mean, you can see a Norman uh, Rockwell uh, influence here, which is really cool. James Gurney has a little bit in there as well, but uh, the other artist puts in this uh, lighting quality, which he was unique for at that time. So I hate to be mean like that, but uh, watch my next video. I'll try to do one on that uh, person specifically. So I have to get done because I got to go to sleep and train people in the morning. But I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Thank you.